I think it's important to tell other mothers that just the same way that you are sharing in that moment the hopes, the joy, the dreams of having a healthy child, there are other mothers that are going through a lot in a big journey. My name is Paola Andrea Fernandez de Soto Abdel Rahim. Here in Edmonton, I live with my husband, uh, Camille. He is originally from Poland, and I have Jacob, my son. But I was really excited when I learned that I was pregnant with Jacob. I think that the first thing that it crossed my mind, it's always, uh, it doesn't matter if it's a girl or a boy. I just wanted to be healthy. When Jacob was born and he was here, there were like these moments of a lot of joy and moments of, I don't know what to do. Health in Jacob was, exciting but the same like I didn't know yet how to wrap all my emotions around him it was so much that you are very content and happy and joyful in the moment that I just close my eyes and open it again we were ready in NICU when we were already having like a hard time Jacob was diagnosed with what we call ADA is kid it's called from adenosine deaminase severe combined immunodeficiency. It's, where it's like talking about a child that has no immune system. It's like a bubble boy. That's why we call Jacob the Edmonton bubble baby, because he's the only one perhaps right now here in Edmonton with this condition. The words that follow that were children that are born with this condition, most of the time don't survive their second birthday. That moment was really a dark moment. Ethnicity is everything when it comes to bone marrow transplants or stem cell transplants. Jacob is half Hispanic and half Polish. And that is a really hard mix to find right now, at least to find a match somewhere. So Jacob was not able to find that match. There's a lot of misconceptions when we talk about stem cells and core blood. My name is Megan Holland and I'm the Cord Blood Collection Supervisor for the Edmonton Collection site for Canadian Blood Services National Cord Blood Bank. Following the birth of a baby, the placenta is delivered and normally discarded as medical waste. There's a nurse here at this hospital, her name is Kelsey, and at the birth of her son Nixon in 2016, she donated her cord blood, and four years later she learned that her unit had been used to save somebody else's life. It was a very emotional, full circle moment for her. She is a labor and delivery nurse. The nurses, midwives, and doctors at each of our collection hospitals are crucial partners who help educate and inform their patients about all their birth options, including cord blood donation. I really hope that he's going to be able to have a normal life, like a regular child, to go outside and play with the kids without having the worry, or for us not to have the worry of him playing around. And I think that it's important that even if we have the hopes that our child is going to be healthy, to have that sense of an urgency of donating just in case for someone else. It might not be for me, but it might be for another mother. It might, it might be for another child. 